Bonjour, Mishko Pagnon Queen Edition of Cosmundo Dem. Hello, everybody. It's Sandy Boucher here once again. I'm Red Thunderbolt Woman of the Loon Clan, a proud member of Seine River First Nation in Treaty 3 territory in Northern Ontario, and I'm here once again with a peek inside the member's vault. For those of you who don't understand what that means, once a blog post is released on social media, it goes to live in the member's vault. There you can find all of this year's blog posts and soon all of the blog posts from last year. People who belong to the membership can go in there at any time to read whatever they need to read based on the title, based on the day, the choice is theirs. They can mark it as read, leave it unread to come back as often as they want. More on the membership at the end of this video. But before I jump into this week's blog review, I just, one last time, I gotta do it. I just gotta do it. Thank you so much for the most amazing birthday celebration this year. As you know, on my birthday, I give away free downloads. Any of my products that are downloads are free on my birthday. And this year I actually did Thursday and Friday and it was amazing. Every single time I got the email that an order was coming in that someone had purchased, purchased, they were free, purchased the products, it was like a gift. It was my fuel. It was me knowing that people care and want to learn this stuff. So thank you. I have to get my assistant to do a spreadsheet to figure out how many of those kind of gifts I received. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now this week we're looking at the blog post for April 17 to 21st. Went back to the routine. The birthday celebration is over now. Let's get back to some serious conversations. And on April 17th, it was called Conscious Ceremony. And it was just me realizing that all of my Anishinaabe teachings, uh, how to smudge, uh, sweat, uh, whatever the case may be, that they require your attention. You have to consciously be doing it. And I couldn't help thinking, I mean, Anishinaabe people, we hear all the time how wise we are and how deep and how self-aware, but we were raised to be that way. And I'm talking the people on the red path, of course. Uh, there's so many indigenous people that are struggling, that you know are, are swimming in inherited trauma, but generational trauma, I think that's what I wanted to say. Uh, just the addictions, the violence, I mean, all of that is a reality, but the people that find the healthy path and start doing our ceremonies, that self-awareness is built right in. So for non-Indigenous people watching this, no, I'm not saying corrupt and, and capture our ceremonies, mm, hands off, but do it in your own way. Be more conscious in your life, in your prayers, in sitting by a lake. You don't need to steal what is not yours to have a conscious existence. It's literally a choice. Have your own ceremonies. Now, how's that for hard hitting to start a week? That was pretty blunt. Hmm. On April 18th, this one was a revelation, again, thanks to a concert, or concert, a conference that I attended. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, sorry, huh, choking on something here. And it was the fact that I was at, and I can do this, 2S LGBTQ QIAP plus conference. Yes, took me forever to learn that acronym, which proves you can do it. Don't tell me you're too old. Again, it's a choice. But these were Anishinaabe people on the rainbow spectrum. And one, at one point, one of them just blatantly, bluntly said, acceptance of two-spirited people is decolonization. And I just about fell out of my chair because it is. Our teachings at their core are you are who you're meant to be. There is no mistake there. If you are gay, 
that's the way you're meant to be. That is not a mistake. That's the way creator designed you. If you are trans and you finally get to experience your true self, that's what's meant to happen. So that just got me super excited. That's medicine wheel teachings that all the colors are on the medicine wheel. And it's only when we come together that we bring the circle and this world together. So that one, that one got me excited. April 19th blog post was kind of catching you up. You all know the grieving process I've been going through. I recently lost my elder and that kind of took me out at my knees. It hasn't been that long since my children lost their father. It's been a bit. But in the post, I described how I knew emotionally mentally that my world had completely changed with my elder gone but when i looked around my home or looked at myself in the mirror nothing had changed and it seemed out of balance so i got my new tattoo the feather that goes all the way around and you can't really see it but there's the names of my elders down the base of the feather or along the the spine of the feather and as soon as i got that it felt like I was back in balance again. Something had changed. I could now look in the mirror and see I had changed and it matched how I was feeling. And that reminded me so much of the traditional historical practice for Anishinaabe people and probably a few other nations that when we're grieving, we chop off our hair. And the teaching is that for the longest time when you're grieving, you know this, it feels like it's never gonna end. And the fact that you can look in the mirror and see that your hair has consciously grown is a reminder to you that time has passed. And when your hair returns to its original length, whatever it was before you cut it, that's a reminder it's time to move on now, that you can't stay in the grieving. It is time to go on with your life and honor the person that is now passed on. So making that change just made it right it was like i don't know announcing to the world that i have changed i didn't feel the need to do that it's not like i'm proving it to anyone but it felt right to me and that is always the qualification for me doing something now on april 20th oh this one was a good one i swear teachings and lessons come to me i'm looking over there seeing if my cat is eating my plant <laughs> she's not we're all good but it was a conversation on LinkedIn and someone had posted promoting the city I live in and they were commenting on the sleeping giant as he's known to Canadians, not a bijou to us. And she was saying how it's such a beautiful landmark. And I commented and incredibly sacred to indigenous people. And she wrote back and this, this was interesting from an allied perspective. She wrote back and said, yeah, but I, it wouldn't be appropriate for me to share that. And that's where I pushed back. And I commented that, no, it would not be appropriate for you to share the sacred teachings. That's true. But acknowledging that it's sacred to the Anishinaabe people in this area is, in my opinion, bare minimum. Isn't that technically a land acknowledgement? Like, I mean, literally a land acknowledgement? And that was the challenge in that post, that from now on, you don't need, I don't want you, you don't need to go out and learn the teaching. I don't want you sharing the teaching. It'll get passed through your lens. It won't be the appropriate thing. For indigenous teachings, you refer people to indigenous people, authentic indigenous people, no pretendians here. But you can mention and acknowledge the sacredness of the area, which reminds me, Isaac Murdoch, amazing, amazing speaker, painter, he does murals, look him up, amazing. He, joking around, goofing off, he wrote that he was, uh, wanted to acknowledge that he was on the sacred ground, like Facebook and that he receives benefit from that. And that's the part that got my attention. How many of our, the land acknowledgements out there, I almost said our land, we don't do those. We're on our land. Hmm. But how many 
land acknowledgements out there acknowledge that you receive a benefit from being on Indigenous lands. Interesting. So mention it. Mention it often. Quit reducing our sacred places to landmarks. There's the challenge. That's part of reconciliation. And last but not least, on the 21st, which was Friday, yesterday, this one, again, I was blown away. LinkedIn, someone had pointed out in a post how they love the fact that they have activists following them because they get called out on their BS and it keeps them from, you know, fading into this comfort zone where they think they got it figured out because as an ally, you're never going to have it all figured out. I, what? <laughs> there's no humility in that. And I just thought, oh my God, that is amazing. And there's a challenge again to anyone who wants to be an ally. You can't call yourself that, but if you want to be in allyship, then you should have activists on your friends list. And I'm not just talking Indigenous, BIPOC, Black Indigenous People of Color, uh, LGBT, 2S, LGBT, QQIAP+, right? Because now here's the thing, invite them to follow you. They may not, and that's okay. We're super busy. We got a lot going on. If we do follow you, don't keep asking us for our opinion because then that becomes a lot of labor for us. We'll see what you post. Most importantly, if we comment and we point out an issue, do not argue, do not debate, make the change. That's why you wanted us on our list. If you cannot do that, then let's not pretend you're walking in allyship, okay? So I thought it was an amazing idea. I thought, you know what? There's someone serious in their allyship. If you're going to ask allies to check what you post or have it in our view, amazing, amazing. And by the way, if we do comment and you do debate or argue or just ignore us, watch how fast we ghost you because then you're screaming to the world you are definitely not an ally. And that's why the post was called Casper question mark, maybe. It depends on what you post and what you share. And here's a really important point. Would you be gutsy enough to have the activists of whatever group you want to be in allyship with see your personal social media pages? To be able to see the kind of jokes your friends tell or your partner tells. Because I'll tell you right now, if you have a racist, sexist, homophobic, transphobic, the list goes on and on partner, you are not an ally. Let's just get comfy with that. Because if you're putting up with that stuff in your home, then you're just creating an environment that's dangerous to the people affected by it. So it's, it's not a costume you can put on and off when it's convenient. You are either an ally or you're not. And it takes action, constant action. <laughs> Probably TMI, but do you think I'm single by accident? No, absolutely not. Of course, I would love to share my life with someone. If I could find someone that wasn't racist, sexist, transphobic, homophobic, whatever, yeah, then we'd, we'd have a ground to stand on. But until then, I have an amazing journey to walk on the path with you guys. Because if you're watching this, I'm really, really hoping you can pass the allyship test. Otherwise, Casper. <laughs> I hope that helped. Now all of these blog posts go rest in the membership, waiting to be appreciated by those who are taking this journey seriously and signing up for that membership. Because it can't just be an occasional blog post that you see come up in your feed. It deserves time. If we're going to bring a country together, that's going to take some time. I'm willing to put in the time, more than I'm asking of you. But I'm hoping you can meet me and at least join me in the membership. More on that right now. Until next week, I love you. Take care. Bye-bye.
again, you amazing person, you. It's Sandy Boucher once again, coming in on my own video to tell you all about my brand new all-inclusive membership program. And seriously, if you like any part of my work, whether it's the blog posts and my writing style, my seminars, my speeches, my courses, you are going to want to be part of this. I mean, look at everything it includes. It includes my 2023 blog posts that I'm reviewing in this video. It includes all of the blog posts from 2022 that you can't get anywhere else. And the best part, look at this. You get to read whichever one you want in whatever order you want based on the day, based on the title. It's totally up to you. You check it off as read and come back as often as you want. Talk about honoring your path and you doing this your way. On top of that, the entire 52 Steps to Reconciliation video set is available in the membership. Again, the only place you can find it. And again, watch it in whatever order you want to. There's courses, the path, the path away from lateral violence, missing pieces, and even a day that can change everything that includes so many of the teachings that I live my life by. And... If something comes up in your workplace, maybe you need to bop into one of my courses to review one of the lessons. Again, watch them in the order that you need. And there's PDFs for you to download. This is everything I've got and it gets updated on a regular basis and it doesn't affect how much you pay. So how much do you pay? Well, $19 a month. That's a lot of content for $19 a month there when you need it at your fingertips. Or pay the annual rate and you save any more, even more. And if you want it for your staff or group, well, I have a price for that too. I am here to support you in any way I can. And this membership fits the bill. I can't wait to see you in the all-inclusive membership.